Hey. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Ooh, the, it's the eyes for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I worked on that, which is so sad, but I did work on it. And that's sad. Know. It's an episode. Can you remember what episode number? Gil, uh, I'm going to say 81. 82. 82. Last week, week was, well, not last week, but a while ago was 81. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, episode yes. 82 of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel lyrics. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Did it 81 times already. Yeah. Here comes 82. Yeah. I oh, have right. thought about you because you're on strike, and I thought of this question I could ask you, and I could say, do you miss writing the jokes because you're off right now? But I bet you don't because you've done it for so long that a little break. A little break is nice. Uh, and also, I'm still a little bit writing the jokes. Um, not for the television, but for the stage. Oh. Um, a little bit of work for Tina and Amy. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you had been like, I'm so bored, I'm going to get on stage. I'm writing a play. <laughs> um, no, uh, some, you know, filling in the gaps as they go on their little tour. Oh. Um, refreshing some areas here and there. So it's been nice because the way they like to do it is on an email thread. So it's really like being around a table and just pitching jokes. So we'll just like, like there was that crazy picture of Mike Pence in motorcycle gear. Right. So we all got an email from Tina that was like, hey, if anybody has any jokes about this dumb picture, that'd be great. Yeah. And then I just got a flurry of emails from like other comedy writers with jokes about that. And then emails that just said, ha, 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 in <laughs> response to some jokes. And it was like a, a flurry that lasted like 90 minutes. Oh. And then... Tina going, I think I got enough. I was like, oh, that's fun. Oh, that's great. And low pressure. It's at your own home. Great. Yeah. So you got a few minutes to think, um, but you're not slaving over it for a couple of days. It's kind yeah. of great. That sounds and then, great. You, then you're like, you know, if you get off a couple of good ones, you're like, I'm good today. I don't yeah. need any more. I'm very happy with my Unabomber joke. Here's my Unabomber. You, you tell. Okay. So, of course, the Unabomber passed away. Rest in peace. I think that's funny to say. <laughs> but anyway, rest <laughs> in peace, of course. And, you know, uh, there are some rumors that he committed suicide. Uh, there are some rumors. But I won't believe it until I get to read his 30-page rambling suicide note. Right. <laughs> uh, that guy went away pretty good. Like, uh, yeah, didn't hear nothing about him. Up until, that's how you do it huh that's how you do it man put them away yeah keep putting them on tv yeah that's great i i feel like that's what's gonna happen with jared because i don't hear nothing about jared yeah and uh some someday you'll hear that jared has passed on or whatever and you know right gone to death there. probably uh -huh. <laughs> very good chance he'll be beaten to death yeah, I'm surprised he hasn't been beaten to death yet. Yeah, well, they're still probably still productive custody. It'll expire. Yeah, how does that how does that work? Do you know? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, happily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I th there's always the possibility you learn because of writing a joke. Sometimes you learn weird things. You learn weird things writing jokes. I learn a lot of weird things watching TV shows. Yeah. You find that you have acquired weird pieces of knowledge. Like from watching House. Yeah. Certain health things. Just not like weird diseases necessarily, but like processes and what they're called. Or like the names of certain tests. Oh, or procedures yeah. in a hospital. I, I also know the symptoms for like Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Sure, but, but it's more like oh, this the slang terminology that hospital people use for a blood test. Yeah, I happen to know that. You know, hey, you remember the episode where we found out that Cutner killed himself? Yes, such a good episode. Really good, and such a good. I as a uh, connoisseur of suicides, 
Um, because oh. <laughs> uh, you know, my brother killed himself, right? That's pretty much common knowledge. I do know that. That's yes. canon. Huh? That's canon. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Which so sometimes I feel like I have to explain. Listen, I know I joke around a lot about it, but just know it's part of a process. And yes, and and I think I get a pass. <laughs> um, but I liked that the end of that episode, there was no clue as to why. Yeah, yeah, no clue. And no, they didn't like drop a bunch of hints in the episodes before that. Because that's often how it goes down. Yeah. As you yeah. know. The most, if, you know, the the one I always remember, but I, I took it too much to heart as a kid because I would always like want to like catch it the next time and hopefully, and then of course, which is a fool's errand, but they always are like, if somebody starts giving away their stuff. Oh, yeah. That's like, so I'm like, okay, so somebody gives me a bunch of records. I should call the authorities. <laughs> right. Yeah, I remember that one. And then I, you hear the one where it's like, oh, if they're depressed for a long time and then one day they're kind of in a good mood, that means they've made the decision. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that seems tenuous. I wouldn't hang my hat on that. And you know, I was feeling better. And then everybody thought I was going to kill myself. And I felt like shit again. I was like, all right, God, he feels like shit again. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was like, you can't even feel good for one day. Everybody starts calling the police. Good man. I, now I do want to kill myself. <laughs> yeah, that's a. It's a hell of a thing, and it's just a hell of a hell thing. of a thing. Yeah. And I, if uh, you're not a person with the ideation, it's almost impossible to imagine. Yeah. You either can very much imagine it, in which case you have thought about it probably. Yeah. Or you cannot imagine it. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> I wasn't going to ask because I feel like I knew that. I imagined a lot of times. <laughs> I never had that, but I did have the thing where it was like, I don't want to kill myself, but if I got killed, that'd be all right. <laughs> I got that far. Is that just lazy? That's so great. That's laziness. I used to one of the jokes I had is 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 I'm surprised any writer ever killed themselves because I write and I know I never feel good about the thing I just wrote. So I can't imagine you you're I can't imagine you feel like you nailed a suicide note. Never. You know? <laughs> I mean, I know I've been writing mine for decades. <laughs> great joke that's fun uh, i think uh, my, yeah i would leave a note but it, i would definitely at the top write like this is just a draft <laughs> not married to this oh that's really funny <laughs> oh, great ignore typos oh lord hey <laughs> glad you tuned in to alex and jim Hey, we got another uh, another friendly comment on one of the videos, and I think it was the one that was uploaded most recent before the one I uploaded today. So it'd be up episode eighty. And the person it was the person I who I said was mad at us before. Uh huh. Um, and then they wrote back and they go, "Upon second thought, I I apologize. I just want to apologize. I think I misunderstood." It's like, oh, great. And 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 she also said. And upon reflection, I think you're both sexy. <laughs> it's so sweet, so uh, sweet to say. I don't know that it's true, but and <laughs> she said, uh, she nice. said, I've come to appreciate your nervous energy. Oh, really nice. <laughs> Which is really how it happens with me. Yeah. Oh, sure. You've come to appreciate. That's what happens. <laughs> it's like when you go to a house. That you've never been to and it smells funny at first right i'm like that yeah by the third time you're like oh kind of a cool smell it's all right yeah it's nothing offensive it's it's that smell that's not offensive but that's odd yeah you can't uh source it yeah you're like that ain't food 
It ain't flowers. It ain't bad. No. Might be the carpet, new carpet. Yeah. You got that new carpet smell, Jim. Be my new bio, Jim Bruce. He's not flowers or food, but it's fine. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, it was very sweet of this person to post. And I like I I'm not saying names because I don't know that people want that. Um it seems polite not to, but just I really appreciate the comment. It was very sweet. That's really great. And more importantly, uh, or just as important, or it's near a tie, but I'm really glad that you're listening at all. So that's very nice. Yes, thank you, nice person. That anyone would take any time is very funny. Because really, half the reason the show exists. Very funny. Uh, I'm sorry. It's just a, a funny uh, declaration to make that uh, if anyone's listening to this, that's very funny. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it was a good bit. And Listening it, to this is a good bit. Yeah, because the original conceit, half of the things I do are, wouldn't it be funny if I did that? Not even is this a good idea. Although now that we do the show, I think it is a good idea. But good idea. it just seems so funny to me because I'm like, I can imagine. You're kind of, uh, you exist in a world, you're self daring. Yes. <laughs> it's kind of how you. You navigate life. Not all of it necessarily, but a good portion. Yeah, I first, I couldn't stop making my life, my wife laugh today for some reason. Great. And it was just because I was a lot of personal commentary. Because one of the <laughs> things is we're having trouble. One of our dogs uh, really likes to pee <laughs> in the wrong place. Yeah. And it'll happen like right after we took him out, it'll do... But he's half blind is part of the problem. And what what we also realized is when I'm really tired, um, I won't be paying attention. And it's, so he might not have just been outside. He might have been outside four hours ago and I fell asleep. Who knows? And I and I said to my wife, I go, listen, there's at least two days a week. You got to be real careful because I'm absolute trash. <laughs> Isn't that really funny? <laughs> but I was like, well, it's a good thing you found it funny because it's also not going to change. There's about two or three days a week when I'm fucking trash. I'm just tired. And... Uh, oh, but. Uh, but yeah, my whole life is definitely that. Like, I've, I've explained this to people that when certain shitty things happen to me, I decide that it's funny. And I make yeah. that choice. Like, when I went into anaphylaxis and had to be hospitalized, I found it so funny. It's again, it's a good bit. Yeah. Is it funny? Well, I don't know. There's funny parts of it, for sure. I mean, what's the rule? If they laugh, it's funny. Yeah. I I find the tragedy parts of it. Like, I, a doctor said to my wife, you better go talk to him just in case. (laughs) I found that really funny. (laughs) I I was like, oh, this might be it. Wow. <laughs> and then I thought that'd be so funny a piece of fucking pizza. Wow, that's great. <laughs> it just made me laugh, just the absurdity of having to talk about it. You know, Jim was it I always say like how you could die skydiving, but you could also die in a bathtub. Sure. And I always think that's funny to imagine somebody going, Well, he knew the risks. <laughs> Right. <laughs> anyway, uh, the important thing is thank you for watching our little show. Thank you. Um, did you go on a vacation? You were maybe going to. Um, I am having the kind of summer so far where I can't remember. Let's see. <laughs> we did go to South Carolina. Awesome. For a bit. Uh, lovely place. And then this weekend, we're going to Cape Cod. Fantastic. Um, Our friend has a new house there and wants to show off. Sweet. Psyched for that. Then we're coming back. And then we're going to Ireland and London. That's what I wanted to know, if you've been to Ireland or London yet. Not yet. Coming soon. Wow. I'm very excited for you. Um, It's going to be great. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, I have to always approach things uh with 
the negative lens. So someone says, uh, we're going to Ireland. I'm like, oh, so, uh, so airport, got to pack stuff. <laughs> I got to feel bad about all the bad parts first before I can release myself to what's fun and interesting about it. Yeah. So right now, all Ireland means to me is um, I got I got a bunch buy a bunch of those small toiletries because I'm running out of the small toiletries, and I don't want to get there and not have toiletries. Yeah. Yes, they sell them in Ireland, but I don't know where, mm. and stuff's not open as late probably. Yeah. And that's what I do until I'm in the airplane seat, and then when I'm sitting in the airplane, I will go. Oh, I'll bet it's pretty there. But not until then. Guaranteed. Yeah. Air, airline uh, toilet, uh, small toiletries. Did you ever watch the documentary about Gilbert Gottfried? I don't think I ever did. Very entertaining. Worth your time if you just need something to watch. Although it seems like you got a shit ton to do. But if you're like... <laughs> There's a lot going on. Maybe on the plane. Yeah. There's this funny part. That I don't know that it's meant to be funny because it's an actual documentary about him as a person. Mm -hmm. And he's got this giant, or had, he's no longer with us, but he had this giant thing filled with the free soaps and shit oh. you get as a stand up comic when you do all the hotels. Right. Couldn't possibly be necessary. <laughs> But legendarily, classically cheap in that sense, which you might, I guess you might as well be free stuff. <laughs> but it's funny to me because that means you're never using a soap that you were like, oh, I like this soap. Right. And that's you the probably. only soap I use at this point is I like this soap because I don't, I yeah. have a lot of allergies. I don't yeah. like a lot of scent. So I like a soap that's real. And I don't want, the, the weird black bar of soap that people are like, this is really good. I'm like, no, hippie, I want soap. <laughs> soap. I just finished one of those black bars of soap. And then I immediately went and got the soap with the most uh, moisturizers I could find. Right. Now, who got you the original soap? Did you get it? Because you thought, oh, man. I got it myself because I thought like, oh, this might help with some of the uh, allergies that I have. Did it? Just no no it didn't it was one of those soaps you know they they're out there where you fucking scrub your ass as hard as you can and you get three bubbles out of it <laughs> you're like where's my suds yep you just scra i'm scraping my body with a little brick yeah I... does not soap yeah there's so many like soaps like the oatmeal soap i'm like no come on you need the shea butter you yeah, don't I want uh, I want to look like I walked through a car wash. Yeah, why why did we start doing this? <laughs> to do that with everything. If you want to do it with food, fine. I will occasionally eat food with you, but let's not do it with soap. No, come on. <sighs> let's have a baseline. Yeah, which again is all the show's ever been about. <laughs> <laughs> we just want a baseline. Okay, so I got a text. My agent texted me. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what should I tell him? Um, I'll just send him a link to this podcast. I was going to say, well, I'm doing a show about Billy Joel lyrics. How does it sound like I'm doing? <laughs> <laughs> I promise it's not written. <laughs> yeah. It's not a script. Watch an episode and you can tell. <laughs> you, can you can, you can, you'll see there's hints along the way. Oh, what's the through line? Anything but what we said we were going to talk about. <laughs> uh, usually suicide <laughs> or wives. <laughs> oh, so the song Alex picked, and he wasn't sure if we'd um, done it before. And to be honest, there's no way to know. There's no way to know. No one knows. But I don't think we have. And if we have, I hope that we come to wildly different conclusions. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so uh, great. But so great. The, the song he picked was Leave a Tender Moment Alone. Uh, I it, feel like I would remember because the title is so long and weird. Yeah. And I listened to it today. You listened to it a while ago because you forgot we were doing it, but which is <laughs> that's right. 
but it's also one of those songs you've definitely heard. It's not a deep cut like last, the deepest of cuts in last episode. Right. Um, two couple early thoughts. I really like the harmonica. Yeah. Nice harmonica. Harmonica sometimes sucks. It's just got to be used judiciously. And this is a judicious, appropriate use of harmonica. Yeah. Hard to pull off. And I don't think him playing it. No. Right? It, it can't be because it's too good. And no, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just most people who play the harmonica are playing it because they're aware that it's easy. Right. I'm going to put it's my cat like, outside. It's like, oh, it's uh, atmospheric. It makes me sound like I'm doing folk. Yeah. I can play it at the same time I'm playing other stuff. Yeah. Which is never the sign of a sophisticated instrument. No. Um, unless you're Stevie Wonder, you're not that good at it. Right. And if you're Stevie Wonder, you're so amazing at it that you could just listen to an album of it. And Stevie Wonder, I think, the is the inspiration for this song. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And I wasn't even thinking that when I said it. I just love Stevie Wonder. If we did a second show about him, I'd be happy. <laughs> Great. Or why ruin Stevie Wonder? Just listen to Stevie Wonder. A little bit. A little that's sort of one of my first notes for Billy Joel. <laughs> like, Stevie Wonder, you ain't. Yeah. Um, yeah you, have sure. your, you have your own charms, for sure. I understand wanting to emulate him. That said, it's just a really nice little song. It is. And so right after... So first, I really do enjoy the vocals. I don't think he's trying too hard. The vocals in the very beginning, a lot of sustained notes, but not overly sustained, because you know those lungs ain't going to do that. No, he but seems to stay within himself. They're nice. It's it's very melodic. It's very pleasant. Um, it's more than pleasant. I do think it's a very good song. It might, upon reflection, be very close to the best song on the album. It might be. It might be. It's certainly one of the more interesting ones. I mean, it's off of uh, An Innocent Man. Yes. It has a lot of good songs on it, but a lot of the other stuff is pretty elementary rock and roll. Yeah. Um, doesn't, sounds great, doesn't feel like it's hard to do. Yeah. I like Tell Her About It a lot because I like trash pop. Yeah. Why? <laughs> because I'm not a sophisticated man when it comes to... Um, music uh lyrics I'm, I'm more opinionated about lyrics but but objectively i think this particular song is just a, just a little more complex musically but also not overly showy which is nice yeah yeah i think he did a good job of realizing his limitations and stretching them a little yeah but you know you can't do what stevie wonder does vocally you can only do a an imitation, like a pale reflection of it. Yeah. And so then don't go too hard, because then you're just going to sound real goofy. You sound like a, a drunk dude at karaoke. <laughs> yeah. Who got in over his head. Yeah. So right away, I'm like, and I, you know, also thank you for picking it, because I haven't thought about this song in a long effing time. Yeah, right. It's kind I, of a sleeper. Yeah, and I re re-listening to it. I think, well, I'm at a better age for this song anyway. I don't think as a kid I enjoyed it that much because I was still mad. <laughs> right, yeah. And I'm it's, not so mad anymore. So there's a gentleness to it that I really like. Yeah, again, a little out of character for him. Yeah, and I'm a fan of gentle in general. You know, I'm I'm a fan of sort of not always i do like a good hard rocking song i you know although to be honest the hardest rocking i do is listen to the foo fighters so i you know but i mean that's pretty rocking it is they do actually cut pretty loose they're great musicians but yeah so even before talking about the lyrics i say good job that's a nice song yeah nice little song and i'm pretty sure we haven't talked about it either hmm. but i hope last time we hated it <laughs> <laughs> oh if someone out there has seen every episode of this show are you okay are you okay a <laughs> and b please let us know yeah 
about as close as we get. I do like this song though, and it was nice to listen to, and it was nice to realize. Um, and the lyrics, I gotta say, I do really like the lyrics, even just cursory. By the way, release date August 8th, 1983. I'm sure it went up the charts a ways. I feel like it was one of those songs, it was like the fourth or fifth release. Yeah, probably made it to like number 27. Let's see. Um, I'm just going to Google where it went. Yeah. While you do that, I'm just going to let everybody know that on BillyJoel.com, there is one comment on this lyric. <laughs> Tell me. By Greg Gum. Uh-huh. Feels like a pseudonym. I don't think your name is Greg Gum, but maybe it is. Uh, <laughs> he says, wonderful song by one of the best. Oh. Look, he's obviously looking for a fight. <laughs> Yeah. Fuck you, Greg. <laughs> Can I tell you that I have just Googled Leave a Tender Moment Alone Billboard chart? The song reached number 27. Wow. You were right in there. Y yep. Wow. And you know what? You made an interesting observation prior to that, which is you feel like it was the fourth or fifth song, and you're like, yeah, the album has been out a while. So. If you bought the album already, you're not buying the single. Maybe if it got released earlier, the single does a little bit better. Who knows? That's a, you know. You made up your mind about the album by that point. Yep. Yeah, this is an album I bought. This is an album I liked. By the time I bought this album, um, now I know you have the experience of not being allowed to have music before you finally were allowed to have music. Yes. I had finally learned the lesson the bitter pill you have to swallow as a music connoisseur or, or person who purchases music, that if you like a song, don't immediately get the album. No, yeah, you, you've you been burned. Oh, so many times. I get an <laughs> album because I liked a song and I was like, oh. Can you remember a song that did that to you? Yes. Um, I bought, now granted, this is demonstrates my terrible taste at the time as a high school student mm -hmm. but i bought the thompson twins album um and uh it's garbage but the one hit was fine and i bet it's garbage too because i can't even remember the name <laughs> oh king for just one day oh okay if i were king for just one day oh, i would give it all away wow it all came back to me I would give it all away to be with you. <laughs> and the, by the way, irritating part of my memory. My memory is filled with songs that will not leave. Yeah. And birthdays. they're not serving you? Not serving you in any way? Birthdays? Well, I hope your birthday's a song. Because otherwise, <laughs> I don't know it. Oh. Uh. King for just one day, and then they had the most magical cover of Revolution because it's so god awful. Wow, I Hard liked it because it was so bad. It was Revolution by the Beatles. They did, you know, because they're synth pop, or right. another way to say that none of them could play instruments. That's another way. Yes. To say that. <laughs> yeah. So they're doing a synth pop pop version of the song Revolution by the Beatles, and my favorite part of the song was there's a part where they go so you say you want revolution and then it goes <laughs> sound effect <laughs> good so good explosion sound effect great geniuses yeah now on the other hand when i bought uh minute work having only had listen to one song it was a great album oh great those dudes put out two great albums, then hated each other, and it was over. <laughs> and then the dude went solo, and yeah. uh, nobody cared. Nobody cared, and it's too bad because he's talented. But he's one of those, I feel like he pops up at like very small venues. I'll be like, hey, everybody, Colin Hay is in town. I like, saw him live. Yeah, solo. So I saw him opening for the Bare Naked Ladies. I really thought you were going to say opening for Men at Work. 
<laughs> well, I am also going to play Land Down Under. <laughs> um, great. Opening for Bare Naked Ladies. I mean, fucking great. It was great. And the, so they have this, it's like a scheme, the way they tour. Because they know <laughs> they have a lot of fans. But they also want to make sure they sell out the stadium. Yeah. So sure. they pick a really a well-known opener who's an you know, but not like Debbie Harry or whoever, who's not necessarily big right now, but who definitely has fans who will go, crap, I would love to see her. Right. To give you that extra oomph to go, okay, I'm going. <laughs> right. And then they sell out. Yeah, so I saw Ben Folds 5, also saw Ben Folds 5, opening for Bare Naked Ladies. Great. Saw KT Tinsdale, who was there? She went, oh, opening for Bare Naked Ladies. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. yeah, saw Howard Jones, I believe he was opening for Bare Naked Ladies. That's not a bad lineup. The, the openers would be a good festival to go to. Oh, Lord, yeah. <laughs> the oh, openers for bare naked ladies fest yeah the, you know it'd be great if it was the and the show since it's called the openers they never turn the lights down whole show <laughs> whole show <laughs> all these people with so you can find your seat yep and concessions is non-stop <laughs> oh shit all right i'm gonna start this start it all right and this like the shape of the lyrics <laughs> Good shape, good lyric shape. Even though I'm in love, sometimes I get so afraid. I'll say something so wrong just to have something to say. That's a great lyric, a great sentiment. A I very like true it. thing. Yeah. And we start in the middle of a thought, which I kind of, I do enjoy. It starts with even. Yes. Even though Not I'm in love. Well. Huh? No, no, well, yeah. Even though <laughs> in love, it's like he's talking to a friend, but they're having a decent conversation. It doesn't get weird. <laughs> Even though I'm in love, sometimes I get so afraid. Wow, yeah. I'll say something so wrong just to have something to say. Feels, by the way, like this is a song about relatively new love. Maybe not absolutely new love, but. If if you're still afraid after 20, 30 years, well. Yeah. <laughs> you Then you should get out. Yeah, you're in an abusive you can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, those last two lines, I think, is a really beautiful poetic couplet. Yeah. I guess technically not a couplet, but. Yeah. Something so wrong just to have something to say. And uh, right away, I just want to say, these are the lyrics I'm thinking of when I talk about when I mentioned the initial singing of the sustained notes at the beginning. Yeah. And when he he holds the word wrong and it's nice. He doesn't yeah. know that. And this is again atypical. He's not very confident. Yeah. Not telling anybody what to do except in the title, I guess. <laughs> and but not embarrassingly embarrassingly lack of confidence too. It's there's no way right. a little observation, a little confession. Yeah. He's not mad at anybody. <laughs> it's great. We like this version of him. Yep. All right. That's the first one you go ahead. Here, tell me. I think we can both relate to this. I know the moment isn't right. <laughs> tell the girl a comical line yeah. to keep the conversation light. I guess I'm just frightened out of my mind. That's great. Well, who knows better than you and I? Oh my God, no! Literally, no one. Literally, might maybe <laughs> literally no one. A few who know as much, maybe. And it's not just the saying something funny and try to keep things going. It's knowing the moment isn't right. Yeah, and doing it anyway. <laughs> Yeah, that's where we live. <laughs> yeah, um, I know this is going to hurt me, but the joke is too good, <laughs> and so I'm going in. 
Oh. I'll make it back on the other side, hopefully. I'll see what happens. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. Worst gambler. <laughs> just like, oh boy, this is not a good bet. But, you know, you know worst, I have a kidney I can sell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got oh. gambling money. Wow. Oh, I got, yeah. Well, <laughs> Letterman's favorite joke, right? Whose is it? Letterman's favorite joke. Yeah, I think it is Letterman's favorite. <laughs> I got gambling money. Uh, Goble used to every now and then quote that to me because we would just remember that that Letterman just any chance he got to tell that silly old joke. <laughs> oh, really great. Uh, by the way, just know I am, I am going to be unavailable for months when that man passes. Goble? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, well, I was thinking of Letterman. Hopefully, Goble lasts a very long time, uh, but Letterman's an old man. Yeah, that's true. And he's had some problems. He's just seems old. Good. He's old. Yeah. That's but gonna, he seems good. That's going to break me. Yeah, the that'll break me. Know is the only, what I'll try to remember is he nailed it at the end. He got a family he was happy with, and he seemed to yeah. act like himself for a change. Yeah, and he actually, his show is really great. I love his show. He's such yeah. a great interviewer now. It's it's funny because first he listens more. Yes. And it clearly at some point he was like, I want to do something with just a little more meat. And he started out as a broadcaster anyway. He was a news guy. That's right. I mean, weather, but still. <laughs> he got the degree. He did the study. He knew it. You know, All the stuff. And he's a wonk. He's an absolute wonk politically. So yeah. He does his research. He does his homework. Yeah. God bless. Yeah. Yeah, that will be the end of an era for sure. Dude, yeah. Stayed relevant, which is fantastic. Um, hard to pull off. Amazing. Uh, but I guess I'm just frightened out of my mind. Good lyric. <laughs> uh, is it me or you still? It's you, bud. Okay. But if that's how I feel then it's the best feeling I've ever known. And Lord, everybody can relate to that. Yes, indeed. Lost, but happy to be lost. Feeling yeah. Well, I mean, I, my God, you know, I, rem you know, even just little crushes. I remember a friend of, uh, a friend of Jill's and Paul's. I saw her dance once. Yeah. And I didn't know what a good dancer she was. I never, <laughs> and I just could not stop flirting with her. And I felt so <laughs> stupid and childish, but I didn't care. I was like, because I saw her in her full artistic glory and it was wonderful. And the first time I got met together with my wife, it's the same thing. I felt like an absolute lunatic, but it was great. Yeah. And you, what a well written, true feeling from a man who's no longer making up feelings. <laughs> yeah. If, if that's how I feel, then it's the best feeling I've ever known. It's undeniably real. And here is the message. And it's a good message. Well delivered. It's not ham fisted. It's undeniable, undeniably real. Leave a tender moment alone. Ah. It is such a very good sentiment. Don't right. just be there. Yeah. 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 Not caring that you're lost or insane yeah. or it's too late on a school night. Right. Just leave it. Yeah. Oh. I mean, he is once again doling out advice, but it's pretty good advice. Yeah. And he's doling out advice, but who's he giving advice to in this case? Yeah. Himself. Himself. Great. You can do that all day. Yeah. Yeah. Being he's, It's thoughtful. It's introspective. It kind of makes sense that this would be one of his last albums because it's, it's, you know, it's, he's, uh, it's very grown up. He grew up. Yeah. Uh, it's got that vibe. Yeah. What a delightful lyric. <laughs> uh, this is you, I think. Yes. Yes. I, yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, bitch. Yes, I know I'm in love, but just when I ought to relax, I put my foot in my mouth because I'm just avoiding the facts. 
I like it a little less. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just I don't sort think of. I do like it less. I think I, I, I will agree. It's not as clever or sufficient. It's not as perfect as the other lyrics. <laughs> yeah. But I like it because you're not, you're not wrong, of course, because it's just not as good as the other lyrics. Just but, not quite as sharply written. But I like, I like the use of just avoiding the facts. I also like sort of the way that these are lyrics, these are poetic, but they also work very much as a chit chat. And that feels nice and personal. Yes. When it's I not overly to, poetic, which is nice. I ought to relax. I put my foot in my mouth. It's very um anti-poetic in a way and it's also yeah. great that it's just him sort of ruminating about his own behaviors not we're not really hearing anything about this girl yeah i feel this way and then when i feel this way i tend to do this thing which yeah. isn't great for me i should do this <laughs> like great yeah um a lot of just, rumination yeah and just avoiding the facts because I know that the facts are that this is fine. Just don't ruin it. Yeah. The, the fact is that you don't have control anymore. Yeah. That's the fact you're avoiding. You are not running the show. Oh, my goodness. If you ever were, at least you uh, before you could have the illusion. Yeah. Yeah. You can't kid yourself anymore. If the girl gets too close, again, I just want to say close. I can hear it in my head. It's well, it's very pretty. So go get yeah. It's very nice. <laughs> really lovely. If I need some room to escape, when the moment ar arose, I'd tell her it's all a mistake. Oh, heart wrenching. If a girl, if the girl gets too close, I like the versus a. <laughs> right. If the girl gets too close, if I need some room to escape. When the moment arose, I'd tell her it's all a mistake. Then that feels like he didn't do this with this girl. It's more that he's remembering how bad he's often been in these moments when something beautiful was there. It's having some self-awareness about his habits. Uh-huh. And uh, I think with the hopes of breaking them. Yeah. It's kind of like, oh, this, I, yeah, it's very much like mentally preparing to be lost yeah uh in a great way yeah and what do we all know we all know that you the best way to deal with a problem that you have first and foremost is to acknowledge it exists yeah and we spend so much of our youth denying that it's even a thing yep He's doing a nice job of self-coaching. Yeah. Um, which is, the you know, this could be a song about how great some girl is. Yeah. But the way he's, like, conveying to us how great this girl is by how much self-coaching he's doing to not fuck it up. Yeah, you're right. Because you're right. He's demonstrating she's wonderful by putting in the work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not trying to push her around. Just yeah, like telling himself how to, to fuck this up. Dude, you know what? I never even thought about this, but it's lovely because you get an idea of this girl, but there's not a thing about her eyes. There's not a thing about nope. her smile. There's not a, you know, there's, you know, however she is physically is how she is physically. It could be anybody. Um, and it, really unimportant. What's important is that she matters. Yeah. And then you're putting in is, the time to try to be the better version of yourself. I like that. Extricating this level of uh, self-examination. Yeah. From this jamoke. <laughs> wow. um, but that's not how I feel. I like that he goes through all that. If the girl gets too close, I might need room. I'll tell her it's a mistake. But that's not how I feel. You know, that's not the woman I've known. She's undeniably real. So leave a tender moment alone. Ooh, check this out. Yeah. Before, it's undeniable, undeniably real. Now, right. she's undeniably real, which is a statement about her as a person. And look, look at this person in front of you. Yeah. 
and also don't uh you know objectify her it actually feels like come on but that don't she's not other women she's who she is now yep right in front of you and so you're not going to need your old device of uh telling her it's all a mistake <laughs> if she gets too close yeah not going to be a problem boom so far man this song's just about bulletproof i really like it and then smash, I like smash cut to the last time we talked about this song. Yeah. We're like, Sappy fucking bullshit. <laughs> not with the woman, I'd be embarrassed. I'd get out of there. <laughs> Leave this whole song alone, more like. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, terrible memories. Smash cut to three months from now. Well, you picked Leave a Tender Moment Alone. <laughs> that one, we're like, it's fine. It's episode 61? I don't know. But first, let's talk about this sad thing from the news. <laughs> David Letterman died today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, you know what? Then that's what we're going to do when he does as a tribute. We're talking about this song again. Just know <laughs> that. Oh. Not only me breaking down when the tension gets high. Well, I do like it described as tension, too. Mm -hmm. because the tension is feelings yeah just when i'm in a serious mood she is suddenly quiet and shy although on billyjoel.com it says she is suddenly quite and shy <laughs> which makes me think he typed a bit it in himself <laughs> he might have <laughs> i'll fix it later just but... when i'm in a serious mood she is suddenly quiet and shy wonderful because we also know times when we thought things were going great and the other person got weird and yep. then later on realized oh it's because they're also a person and this is also jarring for them yeah um and a great realization for him to have halfway through the song she's also checking herself yeah correcting course yeah um, and what what true or testament to the fact that she feels the same way. Yep. Not everything's easy all the time. Yeah. Like, oh no, she's struggling. Because this is important note. to her. Yeah. Side note, great gum. You were right, man. This is a good one. <laughs> oh man, it, that's really nice. Yeah, you're right. It's just and what an important realization within any conversation, positive or negative, is to realize there's another person yeah, having feelings and having a, an experience. Yep, a complex and ever-changing experience. Yeah, and if you could predict. realize that, I mean, it's particularly if you're actually fighting, not in this case, but in general, realizing, oh, they're, they're here too. Very important. Wow, that's cool. It's surprisingly easy to lose track of. <laughs> yeah, I will lose track of it again. I've said it out loud, but for just people, we lose track of that pretty easy. Yep. We're only human. Yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I oh, may have had a you. drink earlier. Oh. I had a drink earlier called A Little Italy. Oh. And it had some whiskey in it. Wildly appropriate. By the way, I had some whiskey this week. It was... Uh, Whiskey, canned mixed drinks, just ugh. sparkling drinks, different flavors. <laughs> because here's what I thought. I thought, you know, it's been a while since I Excuse got me. a hangover without drinking very much. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what a delight. They're drinking candy. <laughs> oh, so, it's like just... And not cheap enough to justify it either. Oh, shit. Here's how I'll justify it, though. I wanted to. So there you yeah. go. Whenever you're a terrible gambler. That's right. <laughs> On a train bound for nowhere, I made up with a terrible gambler. I didn't talk to him <laughs> at all, because why would I? <laughs> so oh, down he said, down. you got to never fold him. You got to always hold him. <laughs> Yeah, uh, borrow money you can't pay back <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then he died on the train 
That's true. He was murdered, just know it, because it, his time had come. <laughs> you know? He owed some guy a bunch of money. Uh, so neither one of us need to say this part, but real quick, it, then it says, leave a tender moment alone. Leave it alone. Now, not how he sings it, but I picture it. If you said it out loud, you'd go, leave a tender moment alone. Alone. alone right that come kind on. of to yourself yeah come on, come on man come on this is good <laughs> this is good leave it alone okay now you got to go back out there <laughs> okay okay you look great you look great <laughs> pretend to wash your hands all right <laughs> there's another dude in here so pretend to wash your hands and go <laughs> uh is it me yeah it is i thought you that was a lyric i was like no you're reading from the wrong <laughs> <laughs> i know the moment isn't right to hold my emotions inside to change the attitude tonight i've run out of places to hide i'm a little confused by to change the attitude tonight I know the moment isn't right to hold my emotions inside or to change the attitude. No, no, I get it. I get it. No, I was confused for a second. I know the moment isn't right to hold my emotions inside to change the attitude tonight, meaning his emotions and how he's getting a lot, how things are going. I've run out of places to hide. Great. I get it. That I'm glad you that was a say it a couple times one for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's time to just uh, feel it. And you know what? How great because it's got something of a conclusion. We don't know how this will work out. We kind of do because it's Christy Brinkley, but <laughs> but however it works out, he's telling us, or and I truly do believe this is him singing, him talking to a friend. Another yeah. guy friend, he's like trying to work some stuff out. And he's this is him going, I'm gonna try real hard not to fuck this up, and he goes back. Yeah. Yeah. I'm out of places to hide. I'm just gonna just be here. Wow. And, and then see how it goes. Yep. And if that's how I feel, then it's the best feeling I've ever known. It's undeniably real leave a tender moment alone this is worth saying the words leave it a tender moment alone appear in the song more than a few times <laughs> but not too many not too many they feel like the right amount yeah i agree it's not a sledgehammer it is a little mantra for himself yeah they don't it doesn't even feel like it doesn't feel like lazy chorus we say this again it feels like an affirmation. Yeah, that's true. It's a, yeah, a little, little bathroom mirror. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I'm putting in a, I'm putting him in a bar bathroom. <laughs> Leave a tender moment. Just let it go. Don't say anything weird. <laughs> well, it's not hard to imagine him in a bar bathroom, so it's fine. <laughs> Oddly enough, it's really not. Yeah, I'm sure he's been in quite the nice ones and the bad ones. <laughs> Real nice song. Yeah. This, this is one of those where you uh, would play it for a friend who had never heard it and say, do you know who is singing this? And they would not know. Yep. Yeah. Well, particularly like if you had a saucy, salty friend who'd run their mouth about Billy Joel. Yeah. You 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 let the conversation go for a while before you played the song for them. <laughs> they forget what dicks they were being. Right. And you go, oh, see. Yeah. You think you know so much. Yeah. Well, he is uh he contains multitudes. Yeah, you at say. least three. <laughs> it's so wow. funny because we, we do sell say a lot of Stuff you know, a lot of deprecating things about Billy Joel. The fact of the matter is, he's an American treasure. He's like Dolly Parton. He's just, I mean, he's not Dolly Parton, but he's no. just forever gonna matter somehow. And that's incredible. 
That's an incredible achievement. It's ridiculous. Uh, it's so good. It's, it's so good. Do you know that he um, is ending his run at Madison Square Garden? Yeah. I'm uh, I'm bummed about that, although there are 10 more shows, so it's not for about almost a year. Dude, I got to get tickets somehow and come visit you. Yeah, man. I got to figure out how to get to the last show at Madison Square Garden. If you can, I will pay you for a ticket and I'll find a way to get there. I'm going to investigate uh, a suite. Oh. Oh, it probably yeah. cost well more than I want to spend, but <laughs> I'm going to look into it because I am curious. Yeah. We had uh, we have some friends who did that. They got a suite for uh, Elton John, um, his final concert, and it's lovely. It's you know they have like a little buffet in there, and then there's like eight seats where you can sit and watch the show, or you can go inside and watch it on the monitor and have snacks. Yeah, and there must have been fifteen people there. Yeah, so it's not cheap. Whatever it does cost. I, I want to say this ahead of time. If that's something you'd rather do with your beautiful wife, don't feel like because I said out loud, I'd like to oh. go. Let's not do that. No, oh, please. We'll uh, we'll make a big thing. <laughs> I just don't ever want to be that nuisance, and I try to be self aware. It'll just be the three of us. And if you could sit between us, that'd be great. <laughs> that's great. And periodically, <laughs> my hands are on both your knees. <laughs> Perfect. The dream. Oh. That guy. Uh, by the way, so you mentioned him being in a toilet. In my favorite uh, seeing another person in a toilet story I will never forget was so men have unique person in toilet stories because we have stand up urinals. Sure. So these are, I, this is not a sexist observation. This is a plumbing observation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have experiences that women won't have because they don't have the nice side by side stand up. They have a solid wall between them. Yeah. We do not. So every dude has a hundred, there's a hundred stories of somebody who doesn't know how to behave in a urinal. Yeah. And I remember vividly, I was in LA, I was at the improv, and I was in their bathroom. I was on the stand-up stall doing my business and the guy next to me was doing his business while drinking a cup of coffee. Oh, wow. So he's got a <laughs> cup of coffee in one hand and his business in the other hand. Wow. And so two things I thought. One is... Dangerous. So like, yeah. <laughs> so you just want... You're in a rush to go to the bathroom again? Is that the deal? Why <laughs> the fuck do you have a cup of coffee? And you're in a bathroom, which I found disgusting. How disgusting? I could barely finish my sandwich. <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> That's a true story, but the, of course the joke is the joke. But The joke is... Like, it's, uh, it's like he's just pouring it through himself. Right! Into the urinal. And then I'm like, you should be sitting down. It's coffee. I don't understand if this is a soda, but you should be sitting down. <laughs> yeah, this might not end the way you think it ends. Oh, the glorious. My gosh, I, many times I've fallen asleep at the urinal, so not today. <laughs> oh, I got to get through this pee. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really backed up with work today. Yeah, and ladies, if you haven't had a chance to hear stand-up urinal stories and you want more, ask any guy you know. They've got at least one. Just be aware that some of them are horrifying. Yeah, prep yourself, but it is a good icebreaker. Yeah, some of them are just, this is when this person had a conversation with me. Yeah. And because I'm polite, I was like, well, yeah. I also <laughs> think the uh, Denver Nuggets might win it this year. <laughs> and don't forget that sometimes, especially in Chicago bars, I remember there was often the trough. Oh, yeah, the ice trough. The ice trough with no partitions. And then you had to gauge, like, can I get in there? Do I want to get in there? Yeah. <laughs> My shoulder's too wide? The Am I going to do it? The three-quarter P? Yeah. Or I got to bend it to one side and make this happen? 
My favorite bar in all of the world is in Chicago and has a trough, and that's Friar Tux. Oh, great. <laughs> Friar Tux is the best bar in the world. It is so I've dirty. Have been there? I must have yeah, been you there. have. You've been drunk with me there. <laughs> well, there it is. Yeah. That bar, we had to stop going as often because what happened is we got to know the Irish bartender, who was a lovely feller, and properly Irish, so good, that if we went in there for a beer, he'd see us and he'd go, ah, fellas, and shots would show up that would cost no money. Right. And even today, I, I'm doing okay. But if the shot's free, I'm still drinking it. Oh, I don't know. I guess I am too. It hasn't come up in a long time. It's a principle with me. <laughs> I would yeah, you, say, don't, you don't turn down a shot. I'd even say it's a moral obligation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, once you've crossed the threshold of the bar. Yeah. It, that's bar law. There were, once they knew us, it was impossible to go in there and have a couple drinks. Oh, yeah. It was only possible to say, well, we didn't get entirely shit-faced, but it wasn't possible to not be at least, to some degree, dangerously drunk in that bar. <laughs> you can't beat that. Nope. And I have fond memories. Fucking Graham Elwood convinced himself, he was so drunk and he convinced himself he was at an ATM because we were going to go eat terrible food after going to the bar. Yeah, you were. And he was like, money came out of the ATM. And he was like, I didn't even press the button. It's giving me free <laughs> money. And I was pretty sure it wasn't giving him free money. But also, I was drunk and a dick. And I was like, oh, that's great. So he bought us a bunch of big dinner. <laughs> <laughs> free money, which was actually a rent from his ATM. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. We had to rush back the next day because he had withdrawn like $200, $300, just over 20 bucks at a time. Oh, my God. Amazing. Such a great bar. Oh, Lord. Uh, Coda to the song is just that it's a lovely song. It's a good song. It's a lovely song and nicely done. Harmonica comes back in at the end. Yep. I'm glad it's not there the whole time. Yep. It's judicious. Just like the lyrics. Yeah. Light, but not uh, airy. Yeah. Just really nicely done. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you're right. It's judicious, but there's still plenty of lyrics. There's just enough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it doesn't really sledgehammer the point. Yeah. Sometimes there's an arc. That sledgehammer. It's a good song. That's a good song. It's a good video. It's a good video. Yeah. <laughs> Coming down your fruitcake. Ooh, dirty old song. <laughs> this is a dirty old song. You got, and I still did. I didn't know it right away. And once I realized it, I was like, oh, this is filthy. Oh, yeah. I didn't know it until like recently. I was like, oh, was like, oh. oh sledgehammer. Oh. oh. The fruit that is sweet as can be. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, Peter, Ga Peter Gabriel's by one of those artists, by the way. That if I enjoy his song, I love that song, but most of his songs I don't enjoy. It's just the ones I enjoy, I enjoy. Yep. And a lot, yeah, I agree with that. There's a lot of swings and misses. I realized that about David Bowie, because I wanted to be more into David Bowie, because I wanted to be cultured. <laughs> right. And I tried to be into David Bowie, but like intentionally, such as, I was like, I'm going to be into <laughs> David Bowie. And I got a couple albums, I was like, mm. Yeah, I ain't smart enough for this. <laughs> right. This feels like homework. It's why well, I like Billy Joel, man, because he don't ask much of me. No. Nope. I was like, you can handle this. And I've listened, I'm like, yep. I nope. can even handle root beer rag. Yeah. That's what is it? Like two and a half minutes? It's fine. Yeah, it's about as crazy as he gets, and it's not that crazy. It's just a nice little ditty. It's nice little uh, skill piano skills i'll tell you what not right away for one episode i'm gonna show up with lyrics to root beer rag and just <laughs> i'm gonna listen to it and see because i don't think you could write lyrics which is i think what happened 
very likely. That's a, you know, it, unless it's another song about Brenda and Eddie, maybe you could. <laughs> it is working at that speed. You know what? I'm going to try to make it the second song about Brenda and Eddie. And it starts out letting you know, I know I said I told you already, but I learned some new stuff about Brenda and Eddie. <laughs> it does sound like uh, Brenda and Eddie fighting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was one of their classic fights. <laughs> Brenda and Eddie, a Brenda and Eddie row. <laughs> uh, All right, uh, do you have uh, uh, some trivia for me? Uh, some trivia. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're getting very tangential now because it's been a while. It has been. Um. So I went to uh, Oyster Bay this week. You sent me a text. That was nice to get, by the way. Thank you. Right. Um, sort of a hometown of Billy Joel's. We were trying to figure out, you know, he mentions Oyster Bay in that one song. Um, the Ballad of Billy the Kid. Yeah. We were trying to figure out, like, oh, why did he mention it? And then we were leaving Oyster Bay, and there was a sign that said, uh, Hicksville, seven miles. And we're like, oh, he grew up right here. Yeah. And so obviously in Hicksville is a little inland. So if you were going to the beach and you were a Hicksville kid, you probably went to Oyster Bay. I'm sure you did. Yeah. It's a beautiful little uh, beach uh, where uh, you can also find the summer home of a U.S. president. Okay. Do you know which president? Summer home of a U.S. This is what I mean by tangential. Gerald Ford. No um older okay wow okay it ain't well it ain't kennedy we know it's not kennedy that would nope. be that'd be amazing though <laughs> he had a summer home in, in oyster bay i would say maybe it's a president who is the most like billy joel oh shit uh most like Billy Joel. Is that fair? I think that's pretty fair. Herbert Hoover? <laughs> One uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt. Real wackadoo. Adventurer. Tough guy. Yeah. Um, All his a family summer home there. And we went to see that. And it was beautiful. That's right. All his presidential speeches. He had like motorcycle sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or chopper blades. Or something. <laughs> My fellow Americans, right, 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 right. <laughs> oh, that's for Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, Teddy Roosevelt. I had no idea till uh, Sue mentioned it, and uh, I was like, "Oh, we're, so we're not going to Billy Joel's motorcycle shop? Oh, we're going to the Teddy Roosevelt Museum? Okay." <laughs> but we walked by it. We saw the shop. Right. Oh, that's fantastic, Teddy Roosevelt. That's funny. He's one of those presidents. Where I will forgive him for context of the time. Yeah, he like, was trying. He was pretty woke for whatever year that was. Yeah. I founding fathers, fuck you for having slaves. There's no context of the time. Yeah, yeah. There's never a time where it's like, well, back then people loved being slaves. <laughs> right. But Teddy Roosevelt was, you know, hunter, but he was also a conservationist and created the national park system his version of being a hunter is the appropriate way if you're going to be a hunter to be one which yeah. is i'm hungry so <laughs> right that's valid it's like um you know in judaism you're not supposed to eat pork right right but if you were on a, on and say you were on an island and the only food source available was pig you know what you're supposed to do eat it Eat it, baby. Because that is more important than the other rule. Yeah. Because I don't know who the rabbi, it might have been Mamani, said that uh, the law was created for man. Man was not created for the law. Love it. The other thing you come to the show for. <laughs> Maimonides quotes. Yeah. <laughs> Bought a book on Moses, Maimonides, and boy, that was a tough read. That was a slog. Yeah. It was worth it. I was just cu very curious at the time about it. And of course, it's always nice to read a book like that. It's like this noble blah blah. 
and also includes the parts where it's like, oh, he's a dick too. He's just a person. <laughs> I love those. Yeah, which makes it makes you think it's probably accurate because it's telling you, hey, it turned out this is a person. Also nice to do those slog books sometimes where you do feel like you achieved something by finishing it. Yeah. And you carry some info with you. Like I read, I don't remember the author's name now, but he wrote a very exhaustive biography of the Wright brothers that must have been 700 pages. And it was like every day that they were at Kitty Hawk and everything that happened every day. <laughs> and I have made myself finish it and it was worth it. I bet it was. It was interesting. But I bet it, there were times you're like, Ugh. oh, yeah, there were times where I was like, I could stop reading and nobody would know. Yep. Like, eh, just do it. I have an amazing book I got to get back to. We moved and I had started the book and you know how that is. Yes. Called Sapiens. And it's a very deep dive into how we became the dominant species on the planet. And there's a, it's thick with data and science and yeah yeah it is above my pay grade as they say and i'm so into it it's just right. it's just the thing that bugs me about the moving is i'm like i think i'm gonna have to start over because <laughs> you have to have a grounding for the later chapters to really right. to really go yep there's some books you can't uh sit on for too long no yeah i i loaned the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy to a friend of mine who wants to read it and he hasn't finished it and that makes me mad it's that <laughs> yeah just read it come on come on that's like a week and a half you and you can take breaks and come back it'll still be the robot will still be funny you don't need to yeah count. you'll get it you'll know what's happening God damn it uh <laughs> all right so um i think you picked the last song yeah so I'm going to go to billyjoel.com and I'll tell you how prepared I am. Oh my God, I think I'm going to pick this stupid thing. Oh, by the way, there's a picture behind you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all about soul. That's such a good guess. It That's is not it? That ain't it. What? Nope. Um, I'll give you a hint. I was so ready to be right. I'm going to give you a hint, and it is kind of one of my occasional ones where I'm being kind of a dick, but um, the, there's a lady wearing the shoes. What's her name? <laughs> oh. And it's the fact that she's wearing those shoes. Yeah, sneakers. Yeah. Fucking, uh, what's her name? <laughs> Oh, I feel like we just talked about this. Yeah, that was the joke, of course, is that we just barely <laughs> talked about this. Oh. Uh, fuck. <laughs> Why can't I remember? Was because... it Diane? It's not Diane. No. Uh, it's not Diane. It's a deep cut that was never, was unreleased for the longest time. Fucking Josephine? Josephine. <laughs> you dick. Yeah, Josephine and your sneakers. It jawed me out. I found that funny because that was the lyric that I was I was like, what kind of so like just regular running sneakers? Remember what we were talking about? Was, that was yeah, the, yeah. Hung up on it. So it turns out those are chucks, I think she's wearing, right? Yep, Josephine wearing her chucks. <laughs> and I was trying to pick a picture, you know, cute girl wearing sneakers. And most of them are offensive. And I'm like, I'm going to put up a porn picture. <laughs> so now there's a lady wearing sneakers. And she's probably just got done jogging or something. Although I don't think so. They, she's never worn those before. Those are unusual. No, those are fresh. You're That's a fraud, this. Josephine. You don't wear sneakers. You're a fraud. You're a fraud. You're a fraud. Sneakers don't look like that. Um, so I was gonna, it's so funny. I was like gonna pick turn around, but I'm like, no, we did talk about that once I looked at the stupid lyrics. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, maybe this. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Look the lyrics because. Have we talked about worst 
comes to worst? I don't think so. Done. What does it matter? Well, we got to still talk about suicides as long as we give it a context. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk about worst comes to worst, which is an awful title. It is pretty terrible. And that'll be, let me write this down so I can remember in a month or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we go back to Ireland or whenever we get the time maybe sooner maybe sooner yeah next week should be fine yeah worst comes to worst it's off of that obscure album mm-hmm. piano man piano man the piano piano man piano man the superhero piano man <laughs> you call uh, it piano man when there's you know ownership rights between comic book companies and you're like, oh, no, it's like the character that's why he's named marvell <laughs> things in comics well it's pronounced marvell on their planet uh but they happen to have the m and the a and the r mm-hmm. you're telling me <laughs> you're stretching my credulity <laughs> like, like no no that's not an s it's a sign that means hope Looks like an S. Called it an S for a pretty long time for you to suddenly say it's a symbol. <laughs> also, an S is a symbol. Whoa. Whoa, my brain. Is that a mind freak? <laughs> you Chris Angeled me. I just, yeah. I have a couple of cans of uh, flavored, flavored whiskey and I get thoughtful. <laughs> <laughs> oh.